In this demo, I will be painting a self-portrait in oil while discussing the topic of tonal compression or in other words, how by seeing less, we can paint more, more accurately and freely. I start by sketching on the toned canvas. This neutral, warm tone is a good key to tune in the rest of my values to. The objective of the drawing is to indicate the proportions of the face and to show the division of tonal regions respectively, some shadow, light and half tones. I work from the photograph where the tonal masses of the image have already been simplified and compressed. In the photo, only the main tonalities are represented. All these subtle variations and fine modulations are discarded for now. This is done not to advertise some clever way of digital editing to improve your painting, but only to illustrate the process of simplification that is going on in the painter's mind at work. So when looking at a reference image, an experienced artist will always minimize the vast amount of visual information to a few essential, flat, irreducible tones. Compressing the broadly spread out tonal scale into a tight scale consisting of three to four steps. I proceed with a simple modeling of the head within this limited or compressed tonal scale. I start with the background merely because it is the biggest shape present and immediately go ahead and fill in the shadow region, aiming to capture a flat, cut-out, collage-like shape with a hard edge all around. Quite consciously I resist any blending of the edges at this stage, even though the well-rounded softness of the form is so dear to me. I must hold back and keep the edges of the shapes crisp and clear to judge their placement and value of the planes before anything else. So in my mind I've reduced the image to just a handful of tonalities and will not add any more tones or smaller planes until these simple cutout shapes will not find their proper placement and finish within the overall flat design of the portrait. So do remember that to compress the tonal scale and to see the image in its simplified version you do not need any special technical gimmicks. Artists intentionally blur the image all the time by looking as if through it, as opposed to at it. Also, to keep the tones under control, the edges of the planes are left unblended and sharp for quite a while. This is the whole secret. When the first painting is dry, it is safe to proceed with the second stage, namely the tonal expression. In this stage, we will take the compressed, shortened tonal scale and express it, make it broader by introducing numerous halftones in between the existing divisions. The photo I use as a reference is a blurred one allowing me to concentrate on continuous and smooth transitions of tones. The main objective at this point is to build upon the existing tonal base without losing the stated relationships. Mainly, you will see me doing two things, adjusting the existing color planes or introducing new ones working with somewhat transparent paint. While painting, I'm checking the local influence of each new effect as well as the overall impression each change makes on the portrait as a whole. For most of the part, I concentrate on the edges of planes, introducing the transitional halftones, 
which round up the form and soften the hard edges. As I do it, I still keep in mind the values of the main tonal regions. However tempting the effects of the light might be, psychologically the light is but the background for the shadow shapes. When I introduce the highlights, I try to subordinate them to the surrounding masses of color, maintaining their quiet presence within the design of the whole, putting the main emphasis on the silhouettes of the shadow forms, which in the end will be responsible for the likeness of the portrait. In short, we can break down the process into four steps. Step number one, compressing or limiting the broad tonal scale only to a few simple tones. Number two, painting the compressed tonal values side by side and with a hard edge. Step number three, expressing or expanding the tonal scale by finding and introducing the halftones in between the existing values, as well as the small planes inside the bigger ones. And the last step, painting the expressed tonal values transparently over and into existing planes. The link to my article on the relevant topic of compression is in the description.